It's not to say there is not um, so-called, not really, but claimed to be, alternative um, sources that put out fake news. They do. And I'm going to be giving you a, uh, in my opinion, a shocking example and classic example of that uh, in a minute. But that's not what this fake news hoax, this fake news tirade is all about. It is to justify the suppression of information from the genuine alternative media. And like I say, not all of it is. So that we have one source, we go back to one source of information from which people get their opinions and views and perceptions. And that's the mainstream media, the mainstream corporate media that's connected to all the other areas of the system, politics, big pharma, big biotech, etc., which constitute what I call the mainstream everything. And perception is the key. We are being subjected to uh, and have been through almost all known human history, certainly modern history, to a perception deception. It's the name of one of my books. And when you are seeking to program the perceptions of your target population, then you need to control the information that they receive. Uh, because everything comes from perception. What we think, what we do, what we support, what we won't support, what we oppose, all comes from our perceptions of life, the world, and particular events, particular people. And when you are trying to program the perceptions of your target human race, then of course, to do that most effectively, you need to make sure they only have one basic source of information, one basic way of looking at the world, of looking at um, events like Syria. Because from information comes perception. The last thing you want is for people to um, present other ways of looking at the same things from different angles, with different information, making it look different to what the mainstream is portraying. This is true of reporting of world events and their significance and their context. It is true of um, things like vaccines, GMO. You need to get rid of of that source of information which is challenging your narrative. Now what's happened, um, and I was uh, there when it all began, there weren't many of us around at the time, but a movement began made up of individuals, not organized, um, to put out information and to do research that challenged the mainstream narrative. And this has gathered and gathered and gathered in um, effectiveness to the point now where um, we are having vast, vast numbers of people getting their information from non-mainstream sources and the corporate media losing audiences and uh, viewers on a catastrophic scale, catastrophic for the mainstream media, that is. And there is also, not least as a result of alternative sources of information, a growing rejection of the established order, the established tyranny, the elected dictatorships. And so, 
in a massive and uh, in many ways panic-stricken response, the war on alternative sources of information has now gone into top gear. Everywhere you look, fake news, fake news. And of course, what uh, it's being hung on is that it was fake news that got Donald Trump elected. What got him elected was the perception, wrong, I would suggest, but the perception that he was outside of the system, that he was outside the political class and establishment. That's what got him elected. And to, to hear Hillary Clinton uh, this week saying that fake news is a danger to people, this is the queen of fake news exposed in WikiLeaks um, emails um, released uh, as the um, Clinton campaign was um, in cohorts with mainstream media corporate um, outlets to manipulate information to the benefit of Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton lost that election because she has a history of pure evil and breathtaking mendacity and corruption. And people rejected it in very large numbers. Nothing to do with fake news. What, uh, in the end, did for her was the truth coming out, ironically. So we have this focus now on what is called fake news, and this is what, what happens. Um, I'm not saying for a minute there isn't fake news in what people call the alternative, but like I say, if it's fake news, it's not alternative. It's just another version of the, the mainstream uh, techniques of a manipulation. But the idea is to use that and use this all-encompassing term of fake news to target the genuine alternative media, which does professional research and professionally um, makes sure in every way it can that its facts are right before it goes public with them. That's nothing like, whew, are you kidding? That's nothing like the totality of the alternative media. But that's the part of it that they're targeting because that's the one that's dangerous to them. And of course, mainstream media loves all this. Of course, it's going to jump on this uh, coordinated, blatantly so, uh, attack on the alternative media under this fake news banner because it wants to protect itself. It wants to protect itself from the rejection of people. And thus it supports it. And, and what, 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 you, what you get is as long as, you, as long as you are going along and you're not a danger to this global agenda that I've been exposing all these years, then you're basically left alone. When there was a, a, an alternative media um, that, that wasn't actually that influential, because it was in its early days, just left alone, really. No problem. Once it becomes a problem, then they turn on it, which is what's happening now. In the same way, as long as you uh, are in vast, overwhelming numbers, accepting vaccinations and your children being vaccinated, well, OK. Oh, no, no, it's not compulsory. No, it's a choice. As long as everyone does it, that's fine. Now people in ever greater numbers are rejecting that by doing research into actually what the consequences are. Now we're seeing coming in these laws to make um, vaccination compulsory in parts of the world, and it's, it's planned to be universal in the end. 
And, you know, I've, I've got some... I've, I've got a little bit of, well, what would you call it, information, advice, I don't know. Maybe, um, maybe you could call it um, seeing things for what they are in terms of the mainstream media. So, mainstream, this is why your audiences are collapsing and your credibility has never been lower. People in ever greater numbers are sick and tired of your lies, your bias, your systematic manipulation of so-called news and information, and the fact that they are realizing ever more clearly that you are just an arm of the very establishment you should, if you were real journalists, be holding to account. That's why what's happening to you is happening, not because of any fake news, but because of your fake news, decade after decade after decade. I mean, this is a report this week in a mainstream newspaper about um, the fact that uh, the terrorists, because that's what they are, um, United States, British, backed, armed, trained, supported terrorists in Aleppo, in Syria. This is the report on how they have been uh, virtually now removed from Aleppo after um, the extraordinarily grotesque treatment of um, people, civilians, children, under their control in parts of that city. Instead of um, celebrating the fact that these people have been freed now in great numbers from that tyranny, from that horror, this is what you get. With Syrian city falling to Assad and Putin, the executions of women and children begin a meltdown of humanity. Evidence? Bugger all! There's no one on the ground there in terms of correspondence. They're getting their information from, uh, if you call it that, from sources that are absolutely not to be trusted. I mean, it quotes here um, the White Helmets. The White Helmets, who are a, um, an organisation uh, supposedly created to, um, to, to help people in a humanitarian way, who are funded by all the players who have funded, armed and trained these terrorists, including um, ISIS, United States, Britain, EU, etc. Oh yeah, that's an unbiased source. And they also, they also quote um, over and over again in terms of Syria, uh, the mainstream media, an organization called the, um, the um, Syria Observatory for Human Rights. Oh, that sounds grand. Oh, bet they've got a big building. They must be in Syria. They must. You're going to quote them at what's happening in Syria in such detail with, uh, with unquestioned, uh, uh, questioning their accuracy? Do you know what the Syria Observatory for Human Rights is? One man. But at least he, he lives in Syria. No, he doesn't. He lives in Coventry, in England. Oh, the Syria Observatory for Human Rights said, he, he, this is terrible what Assad's doing. The man in Coventry hates Assad. And the mainstream media talk about fake news. Do they have mirrors in these buildings? I guess they must not. Um, within 24 hours, an estimated 10,000 people had fled the horror, but last night there were at least 50,000 still trapped. Uh, we're seeing um, uh, 
in other mainstream sources, things like 100,000 people are st still um, under siege from uh, Assad and the Russians. Evidence? Zilch. And, you know, there are so many ironies in this. I'll give you another one. When the mainstream media has played its part, uh, which is the idea uh, of destroying the alternative, then do you think this hidden hand that wants rid of the alternative media, for reasons I've discussed, is going to um, allow any part of the mainstream media to tell the truth about anything? Have you seen how the mainstream media even has been targeted more and more around the world in terms of suppression of what it can say? Talk about turkeys campaigning for Christmas. So it's the Russians, it's the Russians, it's the Russians all the way through the mainstream media. It's the Russians that manipulated the uh, American election. Um, evidence? Oh, the CIA said, yes, the CIA, um, who has a history of mendacity that is truly um, staggering. If the CIA ever told the truth, it would genetically implode from the shock. It's the Russians. I burnt me toast. It's the Russians. Oh, yeah, it's the Russians. He burnt his toast. It's pathetic. And what we're seeing is in all these different areas, not just in things like Syria, we're seeing um, the imposition of um, rules, regulations and laws that are stopping the free flow of information. So, again, we have had now um, the British Prime Minister, Theresa May, saying that um, a new definition of anti-Semitism is going to be um, introduced. Now, this is absolutely nothing to do with protecting uh, Jewish people from attacks and racism. Nothing. It's about protecting the merciless regime in Tel Aviv from legitimate exposure and criticism. That's what it's about. And again, fake news. Um, Theresa May said that one of the reasons this is happening is because um, attacks on Jewish people in Britain are reportedly on the rise. Well, where do these figures come from? Must be solid, surely. They must be uh, independent. Otherwise, we won't believe them and change things as a result of them. Well, these figures come from an organisation originally set up by the British Board of Jewish Deputies, the, the big uh, 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 Jewish organisation in Britain, uh, which is now uh, what was set up is now a charity where the, the guy running it uh, uh, gets a f really fat um, uh, salary every year. And it is founded on... Um, Donations, massive donations from Jewish people who are frightened of racism and attacks. So, will they go on funding that unless they believe that they are in danger from these attacks and they're rising? The question answers itself. And yet we're taking... Uh, reports from these organizations or this organization in this case um on 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 attacks anti-semitic uh, semitic attacks in britain everywhere you look there are vested interests providing so-called information on which um the world changes And free flow of information is suppressed. And what we're looking at now is a takeover of information. A gathering global 
Ministry of Truth, as Orwell called it in 1984. A ministry of truth in that book whose real role was propaganda and revising history to suit the um, perception deception of the day. And one of the major areas this is happening is in uh, involving the internet giants of uh, search engines, Google, the monster that is Google, uh, and social media like um, Facebook, Twitter. See, the, this has been the game. You start social media and search engines and all this stuff, and you then allow the free flow of information. And people think, oh, this is great. You understand that. They think, oh, this is great. You know, you can, you can say what you like. You can have an opinion and all that stuff. Yeah. But then, as they get bigger and bigger and bigger, this has been the plan all along, there comes a point where they start to dominate the flows of information and the means of those flows um, that people get. And once you've reached that point where you think you're strong enough and big enough and unassailable enough, then you start censoring that information. And that's what we're seeing now. Uh, more and more and more getting alternative information circulating on these um, uh, social medias is getting more and more difficult. Uh, there was a, some figures I was given this week about, um, about my own work. For instance, on Facebook, um, there are about 700,000 what you might call followers that, that, you know, want information from my Facebook page. Of those 700,000, only between 5 and 10% actually receive alerts and receive the posts when they're posted every day. Five to ten percent, and then um, there's Twitter. Um, in the last year, uh, my YouTube channel has uh, received seventeen point seven million views of videos. That's around, I'm told, forty eight thousand views a day. Of that forty eight thousand. An average of 104 come from Twitter, even though those links are posted on Twitter every time there's a new video. And clearly, there are algorithms and there are blocking codes being used to stop the free flow of information that the system uh, doesn't want. We're also um, uh, seeing um, Organizations like YouTube, owned by Google, demonetarizing um, videos from the alternative media based on the, the information they're putting out. And a lot of people in the alternative media uh, actually survive, often with a meager um, income, from uh, money they get from uh, monetization of YouTube videos. And the system knows that. That's why that's been specifically targeted. Like I say, there's a war on alternative information. And just to show you that um, what is happening to me in terms of um, suppression of this information on social media, um, it's not just happening to me, it's happening to people right across the uh, genuine alternative uh, media. This is a story this week. What they call this stuff is um, ghost banning, apparently. This is a headline. Ghost banning on social media, the start of systematic censorship. Uh, there is mounting evidence, it says, that alternative news providers are the targets of censorship on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit and elsewhere. We are told it's called um, ghost banning, meaning you are present, though invisible, in plain sight and the user is completely unaware. The goal is frighteningly obvious. Deny an offending website traffic to the point that it disappears from public view. 
Um, this, it says, is a new uh, business model of the old art of controlling what is considered acceptable speech by the powers that be. As a result, legacy news outlets that comprise of the world of corporate um, mainstream media are propped crowding out alternative views and dissent. Freedom of speech faces an um, existential threat um, or existential threat. Now, this is a quote from Craig Murray. Craig Murray um, is a former UK ambassador who, who, who writes and speaks out about the way the system is so corrupt. And this is what, um, what, what he says. I had never heard of ghost banning until I was ghost banned by Twitter. That, of course, is the idea. They censor you without realising, uh, or you realising, you are censored. People no longer get notifications when I post, and the tweet only turns up in the Twitter line of followers who happen to be logged in at the time my tweet goes out. Exactly the sort of thing that's happening uh, to me. Those logging in later will no longer see tweets I issued while they were away. Most of my tweets no longer show up on Twitter searches and further restrictions are applied when people retweet my tweets. Uh, since ghost banning, he says, traffic to this website from Twitter has fallen 90%. This is what is going on. And... It's because the system, which these internet giants are um, expressions of, are terrified of alternative information, which trashes and dismantles their perception, deception. But let me make this point, and, and it's equally important. Um, does fake news exist? outside of the mainstream media, too right it does. And those peddlers of it are helping to destroy the genuine alternative media by giving um, that which wants to destroy it ammunition. They hold up this fake news crap and say this is, this is the alternative media. I was sent a classic example of it this week from a, um, a website called Your Newswire. Operates out of uh, California, and um, it's uh, run by uh, someone who years ago was a webmaster of davidike.com. The irony is not lost. And this article, he says in um, quotes, uh, is written by someone, we are told, called Baxter Dimitri. Baxter Dimitri does not exist. And the picture put alongside Baxter Dimitri is actually the picture of a British sound recordist who I met a number of times years ago. This is what the headline says. Lady Gaga, Prince Charles is not human, in quote. Um, so... This is a classic clickbait headline designed to make you click on it and add to the um, advertising revenue of the site. Lady Gaga, the buzz uh, name there. Oh, Lady Gaga, Prince Charles, another one. Put them together. Prince Charles is not human. Now, um, people will realize that I've been talking about stuff like that um, for a long time, not least in books like uh, Children of the Matrix about a uh, human reptilian um, hybrid bloodline that actually is um, manipulating human affairs. But I do it in books where I'm quoting people who've experienced this. I'm quoting people who have knowledge of this by name. So people can then make their own minds up based on that. But this is what this story has done. Basically taking that theme and then making it up. Uh, Lady Gaga has told senior staff and associates that Prince Charles is not human, but is a hybrid that shapeshifts between human and reptilian form, straight out of my, of, of my, of my work. Um, and um, apparently, um, Lady Gaga met Prince Charles at the Royal Variety Performance in London on December the 7th and was criticised in some quarters of the tabloid press for failing to observe royal etiquette, all that stuff. It's now been revealed by whom? doesn't say. Why? They don't exist. 
It's now been revealed that Lady Gaga avoided Prince Charles after he shapeshifted during a brief introduction. Uh, quote, Prince Charles was eight foot tall with yellow eyes that flicker and scaly skin the color of an iguana. Source of the quote by Lady Gaga? Is it anywhere else? No. The Prince of Wales shapeshifted between this state and human form two or three times, quote, um, after introducing himself to her. Uh, she claims, Lady Gaga claims, here you go, that she saw him shapeshift in the audience while he performed her song, or she performed her song, maybe he did too, um, a uh, million reasons. Uh, quote, his face in the crowd flashed between human and reptile. I could see his reptile teeth glistening in the light from the other side of the room. Evidence for this? Support for this quote? Zilch. And um, so uh, she um, is supposed to have said all this, but of course never did. And then this writer, Baxter Dimitri, who doesn't actually exist, says, Lady Gaga's first-hand experiences of the reptilian Illuminati um, chime uh, with my own um, research and second-hand accounts. Um, he says, I have dedicated, and what, what he's doing there is basically taking, what well, he's not because he doesn't exist. He's taking basically the theme, the theme of my own life, and then claiming for himself. I've dedicated uh, the last five years to researching the elusive, tyrannical powers that rule our world. Traveling to over 80 countries, what, in five years? Blimey. Um, he gets around. And it never ceases to amaze me how many people from very different walks of life have told me stories about seeing people briefly turn into reptilians before their very eyes. I've been told this, says the non-existent uh, Baxter Dimitri. I've been told this by American cable news anchors, um, Ethiopian goat herds, speaking goats, that's good, um, and um, Australian aboriginals, just to name a few. And in Peru, a respected psychic, unnamed, no background, no circumstances. In Peru, a um, Peru, which is very much connected to, to, to my life, as some people will know. In Peru, a, a respected psychic told me she sees powerful politicians like Obama, Angela Merkel and Justin Trudeau turn into reptiles whenever she watches an international news channel. Support for that? And this claims to be the alternative media. And the genuine alternative needs to um, start addressing this and calling this stuff out and those behind it because it is giving the very um, fuel to those mainstream everything powers that are seeking to discredit and destroy the genuine alternative media. And there needs to be a second category, the genuine alternative media and the fake news clickbait crap. They need to be very clearly defined as not being the same. But there is some, there is some good in all this, in a way. The fact that there is this concerted, coordinated demonization of the alternative media under the genuine one, under the um, heading of fake news, means that we are having an effect. These social media um, giants don't suppress information from people like me because it's a bit of fun. If it wasn't having an effect, they wouldn't even bother. And so um, it is confirmation 